Hey, this is Fred Poole here at PV Electronics. We're doing another podcast, and I'm, I've got John Farrow with me, one of the engineers on the uh, guitar amp design team, among a lot of other things you used to do here. Uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what John has done. How long have you been with PV, John? 28 years. 28 years. I bet you've seen a lot in that time. A little bit. So little what, did bit. You, what did you start, when you started at PV 28 years ago, what, uh, what were you doing then? Uh, keyboard synthesizers. Keyboards. Uh, yeah, we had a whole keyboard department at the time, and that's what I was hired in to do. I was one of the software guys. So tell me what project you worked on. Uh, one of the first ones was called a DPM SI. It was a 76 key weighted synthesizer. key, wasn't it? I mean, there, that one wasn't. Versions. That was a plastic key, and then uh, the weighted one was the C8 controller. Oh, I did a, I did a bunch of software upgrades for that, and then I did the software the C8P and the C8X, which were the the next versions of it, it was just a tiny bit smaller, but still 88 keys. Yeah, and what was your part of the uh, of the project? Uh, well, once we moved on to the second two, basically any all the enhancements, I did all the code after the, uh, the, the initial code was done by two other guys, but then they were gone by the time we did the upgrade, so I was doing code for, for years for that thing. And then you and got, uh, uh, how'd you get swindled in to get in the guitar department? Well, since I'm a guitar player, that was actually a good thing. Uh, I was actually trying to get into some of the guitar stuff before, uh, and then um, it just happened that the guy who was the main guy doing a lot of the guitar processing units, like the TubeFX mm -hmm. and the ProFX 2, that kind of line, um, he left right around the time that we stopped doing keyboards. Oh, okay. So it just kind of... Natural fit. Yeah, it just happened. Like, hey, we need somebody to do guitar stuff, and what you were doing, we're not doing anymore. So, so you're a gigging guitar player. You play out uh, almost every weekend, or how often uh, do you play? Yeah, more on weekdays lately. For some reason, around here, yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays are my big days, and I'm usually home by ten thirty. <laughs> Tell me how that makes you uh, better at your job because you're actually using gear every night. Um, yeah, I mean, it it just uh, keeps my instincts in tune. You know, as far as when we're you know, we're talking all the time about what we should do, and uh, a lot of times, you know, like you'll come up with a general idea, and then when I see it, I'll be like, hey, let's change this and this and this, you know, a couple little things that it's going to make it a little smoother at a gig yeah, or something yeah. like that. Well, you know, the one thing I've noticed about PV, uh, almost no matter what department you go into, they have either a passion for music, gear, they're a player, mm -hmm. they're, they're sound reinforcement, you know, we're talking about circuit board designers that are drummers, you know, we're talking about the guys that... You know, it, it took me a long time to even realize that Elon was a guitar player and a bass player, you know, and mm -hmm. he was worked in the mixer department for years and years and years. Right. But I, I think that's unique about PV that every person that's involved in designing our products actually cares about what they do because they're designing it as if they were going to use it. Is that is that true for your projects? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I try to be involved even on the ones I'm not going to work on. Right. Like sometimes I'll, I'll hear about a product that's being defined that's not going to have any digital in it because I, you know, if it doesn't have digital, I'm probably not going to work on it. But I still want to, I still want to get my fingers in there and be like, oh, do this, this, and this, you know, and uh, that'll maximize the chance that I might want to use it. Yeah. Know? Well, tell me about one of your favorite projects at at, at PV. What are you most proud of that you've done over the 28 years you've been here? Um, probably that that old transform modeling app back in 2000 because I still use it. That's been, uh, I mean, I use other stuff too. I have a classic 20 mini head, uh, a classic 30, and, you know, I use a Transit A for um, for acoustic gigs, but uh, I still gig quite a bit with that old. Well, tell uh, me a little bit about it. What, what made you proud of that amp? Uh, it was just, um, there were a lot of, you know, that was kind of the, the golden age of modeling amps. That's when everybody needed to have a modeling amp. And there were some unique, one, unique features about that one, you know, mainly. It was truly like a hybrid amp, you know. It had the trans tube front end and a trans tube power amp, and there was a lot of analog control going on. Mm -hmm. Like we tried to do as much in analog as we could, and we're still doing that to this day, actually. With the yeah, we still have the uh, analog uh, trans tube preamps and the Viper amps, yep. and, and the Viper Pro has four channels of analog preamp. Right. Wow. You know, so if you use uh, four amps in parallel, you're actually getting analog preamp on all four of them. And, uh, you know, that's just, it, it kind of gives it a more natural feel, and you don't have to worry about digital aliasing. You know, when you try to do distortion digitally, it's a it's a different challenge. And, you know, it can be done, but, you know, there's a lot of companies that have done it well in digital that are going back to analog now. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah, I've heard that recently. In fact, some of our competitors are acting like they invented it. But uh, mm -hmm. that trans tube that we've been using now... Uh, 
gosh, it's been it's been years. We've been developing it since the early Bandit. Uh, yeah, I mm-hmm. think it was which Bandit was it? The Red Stripe or the? I, I can't uh, remember. Uh, I was down at the other end of the building at the time doing programming <laughs> stuff, but uh, but they kind of nailed it, you know, because you know I play a lot of gigs with that transformer, which is you know there's no tubes, it's trans tube right. front end and back end. And then I'll play gigs with the with one of the classic amps, which is all tube. And I don't really hear, you know, it's not like when I go back to the solid state, I notice the difference. It's really, uh, those guys really nailed the uh, the feel and the tone. Because they didn't just try to design a circuit that gave you the same curve. They went through every little step of the tube circuit and, and said, you know, what does this section of the circuit do to the signal? How do we mimic that with solid state and just kept going through it like that yeah that was a patented actually the, the oh yeah the trans tube technology i mean we're yeah. still we're still using it and i've i've had uh plenty of gigs where i was using that amp where tube amp players would be at the gig it's like what is that amp i need to get one of those <laughs> yeah yeah you know? so tell me a little bit about without being too specific you're working on some projects right now uh that are along those lines and mm-hmm. uh tell me a little bit about that and and how we're going to kind of integrate the old with the new and a little bit about what's going on without spilling the beans. Oh, that's a trick question. How do I, where, here's the beans. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really uh, just different mixtures of that, of that analog technology with digital, you know, um, you know, sometimes the, sometimes we're just using digital for the, for the effects for reverb, delay, things like that. Other times we're, um, bringing it in for, um, you know, EQ, cabinet modeling, things like that. Um, so yeah, we did, we got some interesting ways, like different, each product is a different mix, you know, you figure out how much money you're going to put into the digital oh, section, yeah, how much yeah. you want to put in the analog section. But, uh, you know, I don't want to say too much and then yeah, right. So <laughs> no, I can't use the podcast. I could tell you, but then you have to kill me. Is that how it <laughs> no, no. So if we killed yeah. you, we wouldn't get the project done. <laughs> so speaking of projects and project development, one of the most challenging things at any organization is, is uh, you know, interacting with people. And a lot of times in your position, uh, you have a unique perspective because you're the guy that actually uh, makes things happen. You get a guy like sales guy comes in and says, hey, I got this crazy great idea. And then, you know, the engineers are thinking, well, that's really not that possible or it can't be done or it's kind of crazy. But it's an art of actually taking um, what may be a bad idea or interacting with somebody mm-hmm. and turning it into a decent idea and then eventually getting a product that we're pr- all proud of that we can sell. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that because, I mean, that's something you've got to deal with, not only with me, but throughout your 28-year career, career at PV. Mm-hmm. I bet you met some interesting type of people that were oh, yeah. non-engineer types. and the, the tough one is when uh, a lot of times somebody has an idea that they, they're real excited about because it, it's an original idea. A lot of time it's not. A lot of time it's something that's been done or it's out there and they're just not not up on the market enough to sure, realize sure. it's out there. Other times it's an idea that that nobody is doing but for a reason. Right. It's like that's <laughs> just, just a, a bad, bad idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to so that's you know, you're looking for that diamond in the road. You're looking for that that really original idea that's whoa, well, that's somebody needs to be doing that. Yeah. And, you know. and I think the great thing about the the culture here at P V or, or the environment is I mean everybody here uh, is a musician or, or, or somebody that really is passionate about what they do. Or they so, work sound at yeah, the church so, or something like right. that. Right, so yeah. everybody mm-hmm. is, is coming from at least a common ground of, of, of being using the gear, being in the gear. So most of the, most of the arguments, from, I mean, from my perspective, and the, uh, and the discussions have been from uh, a good place. And, and because of the fact that everybody here uh, is involved in the industry, we automatically end up with a better product, even Hartley. I mean, he's super passionate about this stuff. Tell me a little bit about your interactions with Hartley over the years. Oh, man. That's another one of those, what am I allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, Hartley, Hartley loves a good argument, you know? I mean, there have been, there've been times where... Uh, there have been plenty of times where there was a, what I felt was a bad idea and Hartley kind of came in and saved the day because he he recognized it as a bad idea also, and it's like, oh, thank you, Hartley, for fixing that, <laughs> you know. And then there have been other times where I thought we were on the right track, and Hartley would come in and ask for a change that I didn't like, and then we'd have to, you you know what I'm. Oh, I there. know exactly you've what you're talking there. about. His name is on the building, and he's still involved to this day, 100. percent And yeah, but it, it's nice to know that you can. Uh, you, you can at least claim to his face that you think oh, yeah. he's wrong on a certain thing yeah. and then continue to 
be an employee the next time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, what, we, have, we have freedom of speech here. Yeah, yes, yes, we <laughs> absolutely do. We, uh, I, can, I can't tell you the number of times him and I have been on the opposite side of an argument, mm -hmm. and, and we've gone just, you know, uh, at, at it, let, just, you know, cats and dogs at it. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we come up with a better product. Uh, and and, mm -hmm. and it, it's never, the great thing about PV is, is none of that's ever personal, and, and, it, and it's a good environment to be in. Tell me a, tell me a funny story about working here. I mean, something that uh, you, you recall, whether it was at a trade show, or I mean, you've been you've been doing oh, this such a long man. time. I'm sure there's some stories that are uh, maybe not rated G, but yeah, I got the the first ones popping into my head. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot there. Oh, that's all right. Oh well, man, yeah, let me. I'll I'll let you know if I think of a good one. But. Get back to me in a little bit on it. So, uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, your band. What are you doing right now? Playing out. Um. Right now, most of my gigs, we have a Tuesday house gig. Me and uh, Johnny Miller recently retired from TV, and uh, we have a drummer and a little three-piece band, classic rock, blues, a little bit R&B and things like that. And we just uh, play in this little restaurant on Tuesday nights, you know, for a couple hours. And uh, I have a, a blues band that plays once in a while, and then I have an acoustic duo with a female singer who's great. And uh, that's... Everything else is like you just fill in and, you know, I'll play pickup gigs and somebody needs a guitar player. And, and the acoustic band, you're yeah. using the Transit A, right? Yeah. And tell me a little bit about that. You were instrumental in the design of that pedal. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, John, that's one of the best sounding acoustic anything I've ever heard, whether it's an amp or a pedal. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really is a fantastic product. And I've had some of my, you know, there's, there's PV snobs. We all know that. There's <laughs> these people out there for some reason or another, they think that... Uh, uh, they've got to have a boutique product or something that. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Trace Elliott. So yeah. It's well, like, it's Trace Elliott. If they don't like the PV name, it says Trace Elliott. It says Trace Elliott. But I've got a, a friend of mine, you know, that's one of those type of people that mm -hmm. never would use a piece of PV gear, no matter how, you know, whatever it sounded like. Yeah. And I, I, I gave him a transit day, and he was doing some demo work for me. I think you know who he is, Mike, Mike Robertson. Uh, Mike, if you're mm -hmm. listening. Uh, we love you. I was just <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. Mike from the Nam Show. That's Mike from the yeah, Nam Show. Yeah, those guys yeah. did a great job. And to this day, he's using that pedal nice. uh, on his pedal board. Tell me a little bit about the design of that, uh, why it sounds so good, and why you're proud of it. Um, well, I have to give a lot of credit to the legacy Trace Elliott, um, the trans, the the Trace acoustic amp, like the TA two hundred, mm -hmm. um, because that amp sounds so good, and the and the effects were. Uh, were, you know, worked really well. A lot of what I did was take the new platform and tweak it to sound as much like the amp as possible. <laughs> so I would have the transit circuit board hooked up to the computer and tweaking effects parameters until the reverb and, and the, you know, like the shape function had mm -hmm. to be in the same spot. So a lot of it was replicating the tone of, of the amp. And that's important Which with was, Trace because, I mean, it's yeah. a fantastic legacy, and that's part of the reason. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. When we design a new Trace product, we're, we're trying to hold on to the legacy, but to a point. Like, the, every once in a while, there's a legacy thing that's not that great. Like, we could actually improve that. But since that amp sounds so great, like, 80% of what I did was matching that. And then, um, but then we threw, you know, we threw a few new wrinkles into it, like... Uh, you know, the chorus wasn't in, right? You know, things like that, and uh, you know, and there's a couple small things. We threw the, we threw the tuner in there, which is nice, and then um, there's a boost. And uh, one of the things I like, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I'm I'm a big fan of delay and reverb trails being right. preserved. So when you turn the delay off or the reverb off, you're cutting the input to the effect, so you're not going to chop the tail. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that, and and it's a lot dip more difficult to make the circuit so that it has the trail when you're when you're switching, so it sounds natural, and the mm -hmm. and, the, and the delay doesn't just cut off. Um, and you know, we go the extra mile to make sure that's in there because why? I mean, obviously, you're a musician, and that's important to you, mm -hmm. and you can hear those things. Yeah, it's, it's, sometimes it's tricky on a pedal because uh, on a single effect pedal because people want true bypass. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of companies that'll. In true bypass mode, it cuts the tail because it has to. It's not true bypass if it doesn't. And if you choose buffered bypass, then you get the tail. On that product, since it was, you know, everything in the same box, it's it, and there's the EQs running all the time. You're, there is no true bypass. You can't, you can't completely bypass the box anyways. So might as well do it the right way. So tell know? me about that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of 
uh, fairy dust and myths about uh, our industry. And, and if you get on the forums, there's a, there a lot of people that like to talk about true bypass or things like, you know, nine volts and, and headroom and, and amplifiers. Yeah. And, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the, your pet peeves, which are the, which are the biggest baloney and, and which are actually more than true. <laughs> Um, I mean, if you're using a ton of pedals, you don't, you probably don't want every pedal to be buffered because you're going to get the the noise from the buffers will be additive. You and know. tell me, tell me what a, what a buffer is for the people that are listening that, that don't quite understand. Um, you know, a lot of guitar players, they just take top, hook as many pedals as they can together. And if it sounds good that, you know, that's it. Yeah. They don't really care. It just kind of uses active circuitry to kind of push the signal out stronger instead of, you know, it comes out of the guitar and then as it goes through more cable and more pedals, it'll get a little bit weaker and weaker. And if you have a buffered pedal, it kind of re kind of resets it. I'm trying to speak in non-engineering No, exactly. Terms. So because in, in a, a way that people can recognize it, sometimes it sounds like the high end will roll off. If you've yeah. got a guitar cable that's 30 feet long, let's say, mm -hmm. it's not going to sound like a guitar by the time it gets to the amplifier or right. the pedal. Unless right? you're using an active guitar. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, that's why I think if you're using a pedal board that has, you know, eight, ten, or more pedals, the best thing is probably have the first and last pedals buffered. Because the first one being buffered kind of, you know, as soon as your cable is, is done, it's now you get a buffer through the rest of them, and then you get a buffer on the last one going to the amp, but you're not getting additive noise on anything in between. Mm. And I, I think that's a fairly uh, common theory for guys designing pedal boards. Yeah, know? actually, we have a, a Buddha volume pedal that's actually a buffered volume pedal. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we talk about all the time All the time is, is when you're adding a, a regular volume pedal to to a circuit, especially with a, being the first in line, you're definitely affecting the tone of the instrument. Right. Where, yeah. Is it switchable where it can be yeah, passive? At, at, yeah, at, at, it's switchable, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if you have it, if you have the first pedal buffered and your volume pedal just happens to be next, you probably wouldn't want it buffered because there's right. not really a reason to. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. So it's good that it's switchable. So tell me a little bit more about uh, the culture at PV. Uh, why you like working here? You've been here for obviously 28 years. So tell me a little bit about that. And, uh, you know, because you moved from Buffalo to Meridian, Mississippi. Yeah. So talk about a little culture shock there. And <laughs> uh, obviously you've stayed. So tell me uh, a little bit about it. I think I was more worried what the culture shock was going to be than what it turned out to be. You know, uh, the Deep South is portrayed on, you know, TV and movies and things like that much worse than it really is. <laughs> much worse. You know, so I think the, uh, you know, I took a couple weeks off between my job up there and here again. It just you figured take a little time off. And that two weeks I was kind of worried about, oh, my, you know. Like, if I wear a Buffalo Bill shirt, am I going to get in a fight and things like that, you know? <laughs> and then once I got here, it was like, ah, it's just a, you know. Tell me about people the people at Peavy, accents. yeah. Oh, it's it, Peavy's great. It's just, uh, you know, I like the atmosphere because it's, you know, we're working on music equipment. It's a bunch of music nerds, but it's laid back. You know, it's almost like... Uh, it almost feels like working in a music store, but you're building it instead of selling it. Yeah, which is incredible. Know? I mean, you have worked on, for 28 years, do you have any idea the number of products you've worked on? 67. 67. No, I completely, <laughs> I completely made that up. I have no idea. Yeah. 42. No, I don't but know. But it, it's, it's got to be It's got to be dozens or maybe even uh, over 100 products. I mean, at, at one point, you know, sometimes we're putting out 50, 60 products a year. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it for 28 years, that can rack up pretty quick. Yeah, it's been a lot. But, I mean... Because yeah, some some projects you you're working on with other people and you might put in a, a month and you and you're done. Other ones like back in the days of the keyboards, I would put in a you know uh, eighteen to twenty four months on one project. Wow, you know so. But the point is, I mean, you've you've made a lot of products that have sold to one hundred and thirty six countries around the world and changed a lot of lives, and that that's pretty cool. I mean, mm -hmm. to be a part of a a, a group of people. Uh, still driven by its owner. We were talking the other day about 1965 when the company was founded, uh, how the world has changed. I mean, at that point, there weren't even, you know, we didn't even have computers. Nothing was done. Everything was done with the slide rule and, a, yeah. you know, uh, a completely different environment. Even when you started 28 years ago, tell me about what it was like uh, being an engineer then as, as it is opposed to being now. Um, it was a little... I wouldn't. I don't know if "isolated" is the word, but in the uh, the keyboard department was kind of its own little encapsulated thing. We had eight 
eight or so guys just doing software and then three guys doing hardware. So it was almost like the keyboard was the keyboard stuff was its own own little company within PV. And uh, I think one of the things that hurt it was just that uh, we didn't do mail order at the time. Yeah, you know, that's Hartley, right. Hartley was Hartley was trying to stay true to his to his dealers, which was a great thing. Uh, and I think it worked for other stuff, but for the digital and keyboard stuff, so much of that stuff was being mail order. I think the fact that we didn't do mail order at the time hurt the whole entire program. Yeah, if we if we would have if we would have done that, you know, six years earlier than we did, keyboard program might have taken off. Well, you know, PV is a unique company because because there is a Hartley PV, we do a lot of things uh, that maybe we ought not to do, or you know, we do a lot of things that were far ahead of their time. I mean, for instance, the drum program, you know, the, yeah. the drum program was phenomenal. They're some of the best sounding drums on the market. Uh, they're very, very sought after these days, but yeah. you know, the technology was probably 20 years ahead of its time. And there's a, there's a lot, a lot of projects like that. You know, yeah. we can, mm -hmm. we can go back through the years. Uh, I think one of the first powered PA speakers was a PV mm -hmm. uh, speaker. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, like the keyboards, I know the, uh, some of those controllers are, are sought after too. Yeah. The, they're the, hard to buy. Yeah. The C8 controller and the, uh, and that PC 1600 fader box was, Oh really, yeah. Yeah. There was another company that was selling them like hotcakes. Uh, I think JL Cooper. Yeah. Uh, Cause they were in the catalogs, you know, and, um, uh, ours was more features built better and cheaper, but, yeah. but nobody, you know, nobody really knew it existed because, you know, it was starting to get into more of the catalog thing. You know, I think Hartley's decision was probably right for some products, but the thing with PV, when you make as, as many different types of products as PV does, it's hard to make one corporate decision that's going to be right for every single line. Every single product line, for sure. Yeah. And and different diff, different dealers are better at one thing than others. And, and you know, right. uh, I, we can certainly see that. So tell me why you're excited. And, uh, you know, we're getting ready to go into 2020 now. Um, we've got a lot of products that are in the hopper right now that we're getting ready to launch in 2020. Uh, we were pretty quiet about it this year at NAMM. Um, tell me what keeps you coming to work and keeps you excited about doing what you do. Hmm. It's uh, kind of the same thing for years, just the fact that I'm working on, on music here. I mean, you know, being, uh, you know, engineering being the, the thing that it is. I mean, there, there are other opportunities out there. Like people have asked me, like, how come you didn't do this, this or this so you can have more money or more of this or more of that? And I was like, yeah, but then I'm not, I'm not designing music here. Yeah. You know, like when I, when I went to college, I decided, yeah, I had, a, I, I almost went to music school. I got accepted to Berkeley in Boston and. And I had to choose between engineering and music. For a lot of long, boring reasons, I ended up going engineering. And um, but I figured I could maybe marry the two things by doing, yeah, sure. doing music equipment. So that's what I've been doing since '91. And uh, you know, I I don't see any reason to, to change it. Yeah. Know? Well, you're very fortunate to be able to do it. I am too. Uh, I mean, we wake up every day and we get to be in a fantastic industry with a bunch of great people. And sometimes we forget how how lucky we are, and we're still working for Hartley Peavy. He's been doing this, and he doesn't have to, let, let, let's face it. You know, he's been doing this in 1960, 1964, 65 is when he started the yeah, company. He just had a birthday. I'm not going to say the number. Yeah, but, I'm not uh, going to say the number, but yeah. he's, you know, he, 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 he's he, going to be coming in here. He's actively involved in what we do, and you know what? He loves it, and that's, uh, that, that's what the company's all about. Well, John, I appreciate you taking the time uh, here to talk to us on the podcast. We'll probably be doing this again. Okay. And uh, we appreciate you all listening. Hope you got something out of it. And stay tuned for more uh, podcasts from Meridian, Mississippi at PV yeah. Electronics. I'll see if I can remember a PG-13 story. Yeah, we'll there. get back to you on the story. <laughs> Sounds good.